Hey guys, in today's video, I want to talk about the absolute worst tip in the history of the game of tennis. And the reason why this tip is so bad, because it's bad for several reasons. First of all, it's quite frankly dangerous. You can get hurt if you follow this tip. Also, it's an absolute myth. There's not one high level player that uses this tip. And most importantly, it is a tip that's used by many people as a magical solution to all kinds of technical problems related to tennis. So for these reasons, the tip that I'm gonna describe in great detail today is by far the worst tennis tip that's out there. All right, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. I'm gonna tell you right away what this tip is. And it's the tip of relaxation in general, but more specifically, the tip about relaxing your wrist when you're hitting certain strokes. And there's not one tip that is more ridiculous than this one because just by observing high-level tennis players, you will see that no matter what stroke a high-level tennis player is hitting, there is no relaxation at the moment of contact. And the reason why there cannot be any relaxation at the moment of contact, because what is the most important thing when we meet the ball? It is stability. Now with a completely relaxed wrist or a completely relaxed body in general, you will not be able to provide the so important stability to the racket at the moment of contact. So for that reason alone, relaxing at the conscious level would be a catastrophic thing to do for all strokes in tennis. Now where people get confused is that the stroke acceleration is sequenced in a very specific way. The stroke is not fast through the entirety of the stroke, whether we're talking about a forehand, a backhand, or a serve. There's a sequencing of acceleration. So it goes from slow to fast and then it slows down again. So when we're talking about having a relaxed wrist, it is perfectly okay to be relaxed in the slow phase of the stroke. For example, on the serve, in the prep phase, when the racket is going up, it is fine to have a loose wrist. There's absolutely no problem with that. So if I'm loose in the prep phase as my racket is going up, I'm going to be okay. But what happens when that racket starts to accelerate much faster, there has to be stability provided to the racket. You cannot have a loose wrist or a relaxed body in general when you're accelerating the racket to 100 miles an hour, for example, at the high level. You will not be able to do this movement accurately and powerfully enough. So naturally what happens with high-level players, on the serve, for example, there's slight wrist extension as the racket drops. This is true for all high-level players. Now, when you extend your wrist, naturally it's gonna be very difficult to be relaxed. You can try it out at home. When you make a wrist extension, naturally these muscles are going to flex. And this is exactly what happens on the serve. So if I'm relaxed in the prep phase, it's perfectly fine. But as my racket drops, naturally, there is gonna be some wrist extension to provide stability to the racket as it's traveling fast. And I'm not even talking about the contact. Of course, at the moment of contact on the serve, you need to have stability or you're gonna have a very inconsistent contact point. Now, high-level players are not conscious of these things because the racket is accelerating so fast, these movements are over in a matter of milliseconds. So players are doing these movements automatically, or in other words, intuitively. They're not conscious of how the wrist is positioned when the racket is traveling at its fastest. Now on the forehand, it's very similar. You can be very relaxed in the prep phase when the racket is moving slowly. So you can have a relaxed wrist or a bent wrist, the wrist can move, but as the racket starts to accelerate faster, what happens naturally is that the wrist starts to extend and we, again, get into a little bit more of a muscle flexion here. Why is this so important? Because as we start approaching the ball in the forward phase, the wrist is gonna be extended. You could call this the lag phase. And as we get into the contact, naturally we're gonna have an extended position of the wrist. There's gonna be more flexion in the forearm muscle. 
And this is incredibly important to provide stability to the racket at the moment of contact. So again, in the slow phase, the wrist can be relaxed, but as we get into the faster stages of the forehand, naturally we have to provide more stability to the racket at the moment of contact. And that is absolutely impossible to do if the wrist is relaxed. And having a stable contact point is incredibly important on the volley because see, we're absorbing a lot of the power from the opponent. We don't have that much of a preparation on the volley. We don't have as much swing momentum. We're basically dealing with the pace of the incoming ball. So here, it would be an absolute disaster to have a relaxed wrist. Here, you wanna actually hold the racket a little bit tighter than all your other strokes. Why? Because you wanna provide stability to the racket at the moment of contact, whether you're hitting a forehand volley or a backhand volley, it is incredibly important to have a stable racket head when you meet the ball. It is also true that on a one-handed or a two-handed backhand, you need a stable racket head at the moment of contact, so it would be counterintuitive to try to relax the backhand, or even on a slice backhand, you don't want to be relaxed, you want to have a firm, stable contact point. Now, if you're a high-level player, no matter what I tell you as far as relaxation, it's not going to make any difference. The reason for this is that the contact zone on all the strokes that you're hitting is gonna happen without you being conscious of it. So if I told you to relax, you would try to relax your stroke in the prep phase when the racket is moving slowly, when you can actually control the racket more. But naturally, as you get closer to the contact, you will get more wrist extension, you will get more stability provided to the moment of contact because whether you are aware of this consciously or not, it is absolutely impossible to hit the ball, to make contact with it if you truly had a relaxed wrist. This would have a catastrophic effect on the stability of the racket face and there would be many miss hits and you would actually lose a tremendous amount of power. Now this is something that you can experiment with next time you're on the practice court. Try hitting any shot and try consciously squeezing the racket a little bit more, you will see that you're gonna get a lot more power than if you try to hit the ball and consciously relax the hand. The difference in the power that you can make on your shot is tremendous because not only will you lose stability, when you relax the moment of contact, you will also lose power. Now the reason for this is that the racket will move more and the power will be absorbed more if you loosen the racket. So in other words, if I hit a ball and I consciously relax, the racket will be more unstable and the power will be more absorbed in the racket. For example, if I were to hit a drop shot or a drop shot volley, or if I would hit a feel slice where I'm trying to get the ball very short, here, I wanna loosen the hold of the racket. Or in other words, I could have a more relaxed grip because I'm trying to absorb the ball more. I'm trying to get the racket to give in and absorb the ball. So here, it would be okay to make a relaxed contact. And what will happen, in fact, is that you will lose all the power, and in turn, you would hit a feel shot, for example, a drop shot. So at the high level, the tip of relaxing the wrist at the moment of contact, or relaxing the wrist in general, is completely useless because players naturally intuitively, instinctively, will have a more stable moment of contact because that's the only way high-level tennis can be played. So if I, for example, give a tip to a high-level player to relax, they would relax the prep phase. Now, is it useful to relax the prep phase? It might be, it might not be, it depends on the player. What a lot of people get confused with is style versus fundamentals. So there are some styles where there is a very loose position of the wrist. I'm sure you know players who have a loose wrist and the racket is in a certain position as it goes back on the forehand or on the serve. And there are some other players who will have a set position of the wrist when the racket goes back. For example, on the WTA Tour, you will often see a more set position of the wrist, while on the ATP Tour, you will see more variation. You will see players with set positions of the wrist on the serve, the forehand and the backhand. But on the WTA Tour, you will mostly see set positions of the wrist. So to a viewer, it looks like as if the stroke is more stiff, 
simply because the wrist is in a set position as the racket is going back, whether it be the forehand or the serve. While on the ATP Tour, some players will have a more fluid wrist in the prep phase. So it might appear as if these players were more relaxed. Now the player that's most responsible for all these myths that are floating around in the tennis scene about being relaxed is Roger Federer. Now it's not his fault, but there's a lot of videos of Roger Federer warming up. Now, when you are warming up for tennis, especially if you're doing it in a tournament, you're not really training. And there's literally videos of Federer hitting forehands without using his body, without moving his feet. Quite possibly the first five minutes when he's just getting loosened up basically, maybe for an upcoming match. And he is kind of stroking the ball and it does look like as if he's relaxed. But I'm here to tell you that that's not the real Roger Federer. If you, for example, take a look at the top tennis training video where Alex is hitting with Federer. And this is a fantastic video because Federer is playing all out. He is ripping the ball and Federer does not look relaxed at all. That is the real Federer and he is not relaxed. Now I'm going to transition into not only being relaxed in the way your wrist is moving throughout the strokes, but also being relaxed. This is not what tennis is. Now all you have to do is find out where a futures tournament is and you pull up to this tournament and you just hang out in the parking lot for a little while and make sure that you go to this tournament when the qualities are going on on the first round where all the courts are filled and just sit in the parking lot. Don't watch any matches and just listen. And what you will hear is not relaxation. You will hear grunting, moaning. It sounds like these players are being tortured out there. This is not relaxation. Tennis is played under high intensity and you cannot be intense and relax at the same time. And look, this is not the first time I'm telling you this. I've made two other videos on relaxation. One was called intensity versus relaxation and the other one was called loose wrist where I went over a lot of the same things I went over in this video. But I wanna put a little different twist on this video. And I wanna give you some other coaches opinions because I'm not the only one with this opinion. And there's many coaches who are following the intuitive tennis methodology and understand the importance of what I'm saying. But there's also a YouTube coach. You guys are watching YouTube, so you might be interested there. There's a YouTube coach who has the same philosophy on relaxation as me. And this happens to be the best tennis player who's also a YouTube coach. This player was ranked number 71 in the world. The only other player that's on YouTube that was ranked higher, that's Micah Bobble. Shout out to Micah Bobble. We know each other. She was ranked even higher. I believe she was ranked in the top 30 in the world. But we talk about male YouTube coaches who are also professional players. This guy named Markus Hunchk was ranked number 71 in the world. And he has a YouTube channel that's called All About Tennis. It's a channel that has some German videos in German and some videos in English. And on a couple of those English speaking videos, he responded to a commenter with something really interesting I'm going to read to you. To keep the wrist and arm relaxed throughout the swing can't be right. Just look at slow motions of photos of players who are hitting the ball and take a look at their arm muscles. Do they look relaxed? I had some problems with my wrist during my active time and whenever the ball touched my racket I had this stinging pain. So what I did was relax my arm because I was afraid of the pain when hitting with power against the ball. I tell you it is impossible to relax the arm when hitting a ball. You don't get speed into the ball and you don't have control. And what has helped me was the same thing that helped Marcos. I was able to be introspective because I know how to play tennis and I know that you cannot play tennis relaxed. Now I'm not only a player, I'm also a coach and I've had thousands of students. And yes, there are some students who are too stiff. And one sign, for example, on the forehand when players are too stiff is that the wrist is locked and mostly from a position of the fingers that's wrong. So some players will hold the racket, they will choke up on it, they will have the fingers go parallel to the grip. And now when any stroke is struck in this way, with the exception of the one-handed backhand, the wrist is going to be locked and this is going to cause severe problems to the stroke, whether it be a serve or a forehand. 
And what happens on the forehand, for example, is that because the racket is held in this way, it is held too firmly, too tight, in the wrong way, the racket will not lag behind because the wrist is locked. So what needs to happen is the correct way to hold the racket, which is an angled position. It is a more relaxed way to hold the racket, no doubt about it. The knuckles are going to be angled in a relation in the way the grip is going, and the pinky is going to be towards the edge, and the end of the racket is going to be inside the hand. This is the correct way to hold the racket on all strokes except the one-handed back end because on the one-handed back end we don't have anything behind the hand to provide stability to the racket at the moment of contact so we're going to have to hold it a little bit tighter and we're going to have the knuckles closer together. So the reason why this way of holding the racket is the only way to hold the racket is that now the wrist is fluid because the wrist has to be fluid. So don't get me wrong, there are movements of the wrist that are crucial on the strokes whether it be the serve, the forehand, or even on the backhand or the backhand slice, you need to achieve certain positions of the wrist that are fundamentally correct and truly the only way to hit the stroke properly. So on the forehand, for example, you will not get a full lag if you don't hold the racket like that. This type of holding the racket allows the wrist to go all the way back. Now, is this a totally relaxed way of holding a racket? No, it is not. You are still gonna hold on to the racket. Now, why? Are you going to do that? Because as I already explained, you need to provide stability to the racket at the moment of contact. If you don't have this, just like Marcus said, you will not get any control or any power. Now, if you want to see me coach a player who had a problem of holding the racket wrong and being too stiff, that was my forehand lesson with Bremen. He was holding the racket wrong. And you can take a look at this lesson and how I corrected it simply by having him hold the racket correctly. I did not tell him to relax. Naturally, the hand is in a more relaxed position if the racket is held the correct way. So I don't ever need to instruct somebody to consciously relax. The only way a player of any level would be stiff is if they hold the racket the wrong way. See, when you start playing tennis, you develop the stability of the racket at the moment of contact very early on. Because without this, you will not be able to play tennis. You will not be able to get the ball over the net consistently. So this is something that all players are not conscious of and is also something that's learned very early on. So it is absolutely unnecessary to try to consciously relax your wrist. Not only will this cause harm and potential injury, but it is also a complete waste of time. It will not do anything for your game. Some people are of the belief that if they're relaxed, that certain technical elements will take care of themselves. This will not happen, guys. The only thing that will happen is that you're gonna start playing bad tennis and that the risk of injury is gonna increase drastically. What you need to do instead is that you hold the racket correctly, but also that you have a natural grip pressure. Not too loose, but also not too tight. You wanna hold the racket a natural way. And then you're gonna develop your own style, whatever that style might be. Maybe there's going to be more of a relaxed way of taking the racket back on the serve, the forehand, maybe even on the backhand. If that's you, by all means, continue doing so. Maybe you are going to be a player who is going to have more of a set preparation where there's not so much movement in the wrist. Now, while this might appear stiff to some onlookers, don't worry about it. You are not going to be stiff at all if you hold the racket the right way. And if you have the correct grip pressure, the wrist will naturally be in the correct positions as you're going through your strokes. And now most importantly, and this happens to be the biggest flaw at the recreational level, and this is why I find the tip of relaxing in general to be the worst tip there is, because it reinforces this bad habit that is ubiquitous at the recreational level, and that is a lack of intensity. Forget the wrist. If you try to have a relaxation that goes through your entire body and you try to look like Federer does when he's loosening up for his practice or his match, you will never have intensity. And what you will lack when you don't have intensity is the correct footwork and your strokes will suffer tremendously. Because remember this, no matter how good your technique is, if you don't have good footwork and good intensity, you will be in the wrong place a lot and now you're going to be forced to improvise, making your good technique irrelevant. A lot of players confuse relaxation 
as a state of mind with relaxation when you're actually playing tennis. So we have to separate those two things. So I already explained in great detail why you cannot be relaxed inside of the point or when you're rallying and practice or doing drills. You can't be relaxed because you cannot be intense and relaxed at the same time. More specifically, when we're talking about the wrist, I explained in great detail why it's not gonna work unless we're talking about the preparation stage of the stroke. We can call that style. But it is important to have a relaxed state of mind when we're playing tennis. Now, this is something that's easier said than done. Sometimes when we get on the court, we're gonna feel stiff, we're gonna feel tense, and these are not good feelings. We're not gonna be able to perform at our best when we're feeling tense. There are certain things that you can do to get rid of this tension. You can try to breathe more. You can take your time between points. You can also start moving around between points. This will sometimes get rid of some of this tension. So this is an important caveat to relaxation where this is something that can be positive as a general state of mind because we can perform our best tennis when indeed we feel free mentally and we don't feel this enormous tension that is gonna cripple us and make us uh, slower, stiffer, and unable to perform at our best. So don't get relaxation inside of the rally or the point confused with the mind state of relaxation in general.